Greetings, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another episode of In the Prog Seed. It's Tuesday night. We are here. It's post uh, Sea of Tranquility Fall Fest. And for all of you who have been asking, uh, I will have a full recap of Fall Fest on Friday morning. Martin and I are going to do just a little recap. He's going to ask me a bunch of questions about what I thought of the whole day. So that'll be coming up on Friday. Uh, but we all had a great time. And uh, we are here to get back on track with the letter of the alphabet that is this week, which is J, our favorite bands that start with the letter J, Prague, Fusion, Prague, Metal. And of course, let me introduce uh, the panel here. Of course, we got Chad Hutchinson. We're keeping him up late and man, he just got back from a 10 CC concert like earlier this evening, probably not even that long ago. Stephen Reed, we've got Eric Porter, We've got our center. Chuck, you are our center square. Like Again? Jesus. Chuck Alvarez. Yeah. That's like, <laughs> Anthony Ferraro, George Lemay, and the professor of Prague, Ken Golden. Hello, gentlemen. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Greetings. Good evening. Ready to go for letter J? Oh, yeah. All I'm going to say is get ready to drink. I was going to say the same exact thing. <laughs> I am not surprised. I am not surprised. All right, we're going to go reverse. Uh, we're going to go top to bottom today. So we're going to go George, myself, Ken, Eric, Chuck, Anthony, Stephen, and Chad. And so, uh, George, kick us off with your first pick of the day. All right. Number three is uh, Ron Jarzombek. Uh, two albums under his own name, He's more known for his participation in bands, Watchtower, uh, spastic ink and blotted science all technical metal bands and this is technical medical metal too uh, a little different though it's a, like a short song concept there's 45 songs generally one to two minutes and they're all interlocked it's just him on the album this is the one album probably that I know of that I actually I give the okay to the drum machine he, he must have put countless weeks into this drum programming because it sounds like his brother Bobby which is saying a lot um, the songs too are a real egghead kind of thing he writes to a concept like just using one key or one scale or and it's just setting it out as a challenge and going for it but uh, his work across the board is if you like one Ron Jarzombek thing you're probably in for it all so Ron Jarzombek all right, uh, I'm gonna go with a band that, to me, I, I think the album, they're more popular albums to me, I think kind of foreshadow uh, like new age music a little bit. And uh, their earlier albums a little bit more proggy, a little bit more aggressive, some really good rock guitar. Um, but then they, you know, use, they utilize a lot of flute, acoustic and electric guitar, a lot of like uh, Asian influences, whatnot. So I'm going to go with uh, Jade Warrior as my number three. This is a uh, cool little compilation put out by uh, Chronicles, oh, geez, a number of years ago called the Island Anthology, which has a floating world, kites and wa waves and way of the sun. All really good stuff. If you like a lot of flutes, if you like really gorgeous acoustic guitar and occasional like screaming Jimi Hendrix electric guitar, uh, kind of meditative, nice, tranquil sounds. Uh, their earlier stuff, like I said, is a little more traditional proggy, but I, I, I find a lot to love in these albums as well. But uh, yeah, Jade Warrior is my first pick of the day. Peter, I, I had them as on my honorable mentions. And the one you held up, which is this one with the slipcase, this is the one to own. This is the version to own. I'll hold it up. Um, find a used copy of it because you got the four albums they did for Island uh, for the Island, <coughs> and that stuff is frankly, I think, like you said, much better than the stuff they did for the Vertigo label. Yeah. So this is the ver this is the reason why you want this. Besides the fact that it's all four albums, is yeah. This, Sonically, this kicks the shit out of the esoteric reissues. Oh, yeah, these sound great. Yeah. These, so this, this, this really I'll just hold up again. It's Jade Warrior Elements, the Island Anthology. You can find used copies on Discogs. So it's a million of them. I don't know where my slipcase is. I stole it from you. You probably did. <laughs> you probably so, did. So my first pick <laughs> is uh, from 1970, Julian's Treatment, A Time Before This. 
Everybody's looking at me like I'm crazy already. So Julian J. Saverin was a, he was a British science fiction writer and also a keyboard player. And he made two albums. And then I guess he became so famous as, or so popular as a sci-fi author, he never made another album. Uh, he did this one a uh, time before this, and then he did a follow-up album under his own name, which was called Waiters on the Dance. And that was supposed to be first part of a, of a trilogy, but the other two never came out. Uh, it's kind of like, has a, almost has like a little bit of like a swing in London sound. Came out in 1970, a lot of flute and guitar, but this guy plays, this is a wicked Hammond organ. Uh, female singer, Kathy Pruden. And she's actually a pretty good singer. Every so often, she sounds like somebody might be strangling her, but she's overall she's pretty good. And uh, uh, it's a sci-fi con fantasy concept album. It's, I mean, I think if you're stoned, it probably helps. But uh, it, it's funny. It's a double album in Europe, but it came out in the U.S. on Decca with a totally different cover, and they, they crammed the damn thing into into one uh, into one album. This is the oh, let's see the inside. It's got. Uh, did I get it right? Yeah, you can see the crazy artwork. And, uh, anyway, you like the Hammond organ, you know. It, I guess we call this proto prog now. I guess there's a there's a you know it's not as developed as you know it's not gentle giant. This is not, but you like Hammond organ flute that kind of thing. Julian's treatment time before this. Sounds good, Eric. I'll hook you up, Pete. Okay. All right. Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, my number three is a band from Norway, Jordso. I think that's how you pronounce it anyway. Um, I'm going with uh, Pastor Alia from, I think, 2021. Um, symphonic, a lot of acoustic, uh, guitar, uh, flute as well. Um, I think, you know, you from being from that region, you'd probably draw on Anglegard and Wobbler, but I don't think they're as aggressive as those bands um, when they get to that um, heavier stuff. I get more of kind of a Griffin Gentle Giant feel from a lot of their music. Um, I only have two, but I really like this one. Um, and like I said, I think um, they have two main guys and then there's a bunch of other players because I think they have a lot of stuff clarinets and cellos and things like that in the background going on as well but a really good band if you like that kind of more pastoral there's some vocals not a ton of vocals but there are some um so again george so and this is pastor alia from 2021 nice big man mm -hmm. that's a good band mm -hmm. it kind of reminds me of eldsmar do you guys know eldsmar mm -hmm. uh, they were a swedish band but uh yeah george yeah, i got a lot of griffin from them, I think was Griffin, Gentle Giantish kind of. You, you know, it's like you said. If you like White Willow, you like Wobbler, Anglegar, that whole has a pastoral feel. Yep, Agusa, Agusa, like Agusa yeah. that kind of thing. They're, they're, they're pretty good. There's, uh, they're one of my honorable mentions. Chuck, well, mine is um, well. Once again, good evening, guys. It was all a pleasure to see you all you guys um this weekend. I had a great time, man. Um, what's that? My number three is not really that um, progressive and so, but it's from this group's um, progressive era, you know, what's before they became a total pop band. It's the second of the three albums, um, what's it that debuted on Journeys. I picked this album over here, you know, cause it's my, this happens to be my favorite of the three. You know, it might not be as good as the first one or or the third one, but I find, my, I find myself listening to this one more than I do the other three. And this one over here is um, look at yourself. I mean, look into the future, and that's my number three journey, when they were still uh, basically near Prague and so. Tremendous album, yeah. Those mm -hmm. first love it are really great. Chuck, how tall are you? Six feet. <laughs> you taller. I was like, I was, I was, I was like, holy cow, Chuck is gigantic. <laughs> You know, I hadn't seen Ian in many um, Ian cars in quite a long time, and so, and I couldn't believe that he. I can't. I couldn't forget that he was taller than me. You know, Ian cars is like like six three. <laughs> but uh, I said, "Yeah, I'm six feet tall, man." <laughs> you seem taller. I was like, "Holy cow, Chuck is." <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anthony. 
All right, my number three, um, you guys aren't going to be drinking yet, so uh, brace yourselves. My number three comes from France. I'm going with Jean-Michael Jarre. I'm going with Equinox from 1978. This is coming Ooh, off the stellar debut, Oxygen from 1976. Synthesizers galore, some Mellotrons, just fantastic atmosphere. So I'm going with Jean-Michael Jarre, Equinox from 1978. How come nobody ever picks Oxygen? What's that? Nobody ever picks oxygen. I've picked oxygen in the past. I like that. I like oxygen. Yeah, I like oxygen a lot. Great album. Yeah, I remember you talking about that. It's a while ago, but yeah. Mr. Reed. So, well, my first pick out. I'm disappointed he's not on the show because this would not be Lewis approved at all. <laughs> Is it Frog? <laughs> nah, I don't know, but Jay was really thin for me. Really thin. So I'm starting with John and Van Gallis is mm. where I'm starting. And I'm breaking all kinds of rules here um, because this is their best of. We don't do best of. But there's no doubt this is their best album because it picks the best tracks off Goodbye to Mr. Cairo, which is my favourite of the studio albums. But it also comes before 1991's Reformation album, Page of Life, which is absolute garbage. So this really does pick all the best things. It's John Anderson and it's Van Gallis. I mean, it's as softy as a softy thing can possibly be. I really like it. So my first choice is John Evangelist. Mm -hmm. I love it. Mm -hmm. I agree. Someone's pulling a Catino today. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chad. All right. My first or my number three, I should say, is uh, a trio of the An Andrews Johansson, Jens Johansson, and Alan Holdsworth. The Heavy Machinery album. It's a... Uh, interesting mix of like heavy fusion and progressive with some jammy stuff and some uh some uh um more i don't know groovy a little bit more groove in this than maybe you expect out of a fusion album but i've always enjoyed this one it was a little different than you're going to get out of a uh holdsworth solo catalog um so yeah i always enjoyed a nice nice heavy stuff in, in here not metal heavy just dense heavy mm -hmm. so Kind of Planet Hansen, X, Hansen Planet and X heavy, you think, right? What's that? Kind of like Planet X heavy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But even, not even quite that metallic. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good album. I'm glad, yeah. glad you picked it. Good stuff. All right, back to George. Number two is a New York-based bass player, a guy named Steve Jenkins. Two albums. Um, the first one is 2004 is uh, more of a straight fusion thing. He's got Dave Fushinsky on it. This one, he changed it up, 2013. It's got an electronic feel. Uh, it's, it's got uh, Vernon Reed on a couple of tracks. Uh, the drumming, Gene Lake and uh, Adam Deitch, they're distinctive players. It's got a definite, definitely different vibe to it. Um, he hasn't done anything since 2013. He did some tours with uh, Screaming Headless Torsos and uh, actually Tony McAlpine. But uh, yeah, he doesn't work a lot, but both of his records are very good. So he made my list. Steve Jenkins. Cool. So I had the pleasure this past weekend of uh, spending lots of time with our two Chicagoans, uh, George and Lewis. We uh, were kind of travel partners once they got uh, to New Jersey and uh, George and Jim Baki and I uh, roomed together at the hotel. And so it was it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. A lot of music talk, man. It's incredible how we just never stop talking about music the whole weekend. You'd think after a while we'd talk about like, you know, pizza Chicks or burgers or, or baseball, whatever. We just kept constantly, constant band talk. It's like, it's crazy. Well, I think Jim was talking pizza a little bit because I heard how much he misses it in California. So he was eating as much as he could while he was here, I think. I don't know if you guys saw. So uh, Rick and his uh, girlfriend, Paula, really wanted to uh, go and get some New York pizza. So they went into New, New York City. And the first place they went to, all they had was Detroit-style pizza, which you get all the time of where he's from. He's like, what? I came all the way here. I don't want Detroit pizza. I, I told him on Facebook to go to Katz's for pastrami. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I saw that. And, uh, you know, I... I would say that maybe he should try like a New York slice, like go to someplace like Joe's on Bleecker Street. Yeah. Uh, yeah I didn't want to, I didn't want to pile on too much. 
I know they did. I think uh, the two of them and the La- and Jamie Laszlo and his wife, I think they went to an Italian restaurant uh, that night or something somewhere. They met somewhere. So, which is good because Italian in New York City, if you go to a good place, is damn good. Many of them. Mm-hmm. All right. My number two, uh, it's got to be the German band Jane. Uh, I really like this band a lot. I, I couldn't really pick what my favorite. I never really know what my favorite album is by them. You know, everybody cites Between Heaven and Hell, which I really dig a lot. But man, Fire, Water, Earth and Air is terrific as well. If you love just, uh, you know, early mid 70s, Hammond, Oregon, lots of guitar. It's kind of spacey. It's kind of hard rock and some of it's kind of symphonic. Uh, all the Jane albums are kind of a little bit different from each other. Uh, just a, a terrific, terrific German band that rocks um they got a whole bunch of albums i have like probably like eight or nine of their albums but uh, you know they got a little bit more commercial later on but the 70s stuff is really really great so uh jane is my choice for number two hey their live records are really good yeah it is it um, is jane, jane at home so yeah, yep. my honorable mentions <clears throat> all, all right, right my, my number two well, i you know i'm not presenting these really in a, in a specific order but um so this is a band that made well four albums but we always think of them as three albums and all three are fantastic british band called jonesy and uh jonesy recorded for the dawn label which was the yep that was the prog sub label of uh, transatlantic they were british band they made three really great overlooked i think overlooked albums in the early 70s they just never got any traction outside of the UK. They never had anything released in the US. They had albums released in other countries, but they were a non-factor here. Uh, music has a lot of similarities to King Crimson. There's lots of Mellotron, really excellent vocals. And I think the guitar work is exceptional on these albums. Yeah. Yeah. The third album, this one, uh, Keeping Up, uh, they added Alan Bound on trumpet. And I think that he just kind of elevated the music to, to an even higher level. There's a couple of interesting guests on this one. Morris Pert plays on it. Ken Elliott from Seventh Waves playing synthesizer. And then uh, the band, in 1974, the band recorded a fourth album, but the master tapes were stolen. And uh, they, some, some form of it was recovered and put out in 2002, but it just wasn't really of the same quality as the first three. Esoteric put out a nice box set. It uh, has all the three albums, maybe four. I think it has the fourth one as well. So these guys, these guys should have been much bigger than they were. Um, all three of their albums are excellent. Keeping up is probably my favorite, but I, I could live with no alternative or you know, real great. Jonesy number two. Yeah, it's my favorite too. That was one of my honorable mentions. Great band, <clears throat> Eric. Well, my number two. Last month's episode for for Fusion Friday, we discussed Alan Holdsworth as a sideman. So I'm going with Chad's pick of Heavy Machinery, Johansson, Johansson, and Holdsworth. And for me, nothing else needs to be said except he blazes on this record. Yeah. Um, I didn't really know much about um, Johansson and his brother. I know keyboards, Stradivarius, I guess, and Rainbow. I'm not familiar with Stradivarius at all. But this is another one where Alan just plays his ass off. I don't know if there's anywhere else to put it. And for me, that's all I need. Um, so that's my number two, Heavy Machinery. Yeah, the brothers played in uh, Ingve Malmsteen's uh, The Early Rising Force, mm-hmm. too. And they really added a, a kind of like a proggy element to that band. So uh, it, it's not surprising they would do an album like that. <clears throat> cool. Chuck. Um, well, with my number two, I'm going to go a little bit of um, a bit more jazz oriented, but perhaps um, one of um, this artist's more world fusion-y um, albums. I'm going to go with Keith Jarrett, and I'm going to go with the Survivor Suite. You know, what's it? it's not conventional jazz. You know, what's it, you're not listening to a four piece, you know, go out there and play, you know, what's a conventional jazz. You know, this over here has elements of... Um, of Asian music, um, the Orient from the East um, Asia, and so um, what's do you have um, the folk um, base of um, of Charlie Hayden, and you know the percussion of um, Paul Motian, you know what's it, and then you have um, what's it, you have um, Dewey Redman with the Chinese uh, musette, 
you know, but so there was a lot of um, a lot of um, interesting instruments being played on this album. And you know, what's a, you think of um, Keith Jarrett as just this pianist, but he also plays the soprano saxophone on this album as well. Um, but so that this is perhaps his finest hour with that quartet that I just mentioned, and this is the Survivor Suite, and that's my number two. You ever like total up all the albums that he's done or appeared on? It's ridiculous. All right? the amazing albums, all of them. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, he, and he grunts and groans through all of them. Yes, so he does. <laughs> <laughs> it drives, drives me crazy. It drives me crazy. <laughs> Oh my God. ECM is still cranking out albums of his like oh, oh, man. Live performances. Every, well, every other month I, I get an email like oh another Keith Jarrett release All right. and he, he's supposed to be the world's biggest dick yeah, I met him and he yeah. is he really is, <laughs> is he, he really is man he, he, he's, he's such a anyway he, <laughs> he, has, he, a guy, though. he chastises his audience mm -hmm. you know he's they're, worse than Fripp they're yeah. not silent he won't play yeah I mean, I remember, didn't he walk off at like in Rome or something like that? He like, he, yeah, he chastised the audience and he walked off. Crazy. Well, well, he can't play no more. He has like a, 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 a what's it, some type of um, neuro, neurologi, neurological, um, what's it, um, what's it, um, nerve damage in his hand. Like you know, carpal tunnel or something like that? Or no, I think it's a bit more worse work. than that. You know, so I know that he's not playing anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's not playing, but they're releasing they're releasing <laughs> albums by him. <laughs> they got a lot in the vault. Oh yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah. That's a great sounding album, by the way. Smart. It really is, man. Great album. All right, Anthony. My number two contains a double from the Pied Piper and Eddie Jobson, Jeff Rotol A. Death Row Toll is one of my all-time favorite bands, but you know I had to pull this because I had both of them on there from 1980. We all know my favorite Death Row Toll album songs from the wood, but I just brought this out just for this. So 19, 19 or my number two is Death Row Toll. What what can I say? Ian, I thought was one of the best frontmen in the 1970s, and and with Barrymore Barlow and John Glasscock as a rhythm section, form, formidable folk. I mean, they were just phenomenal in the 70s. So I'm going with Death Row Toll number two, and I'm going with the double whammy of Eddie and Ian. <laughs> of course. Death Row Jobson. We got through a whole weekend last week without mentioning the A album. Oh, man. <laughs> but he did have Elias with him. That's right. True. That's right. It's funny. I fully expected we were going to get a, a question from the audience that had to do with Eddie, but uh, instead someone brought up the whole Elias and yep. Anthony and Lewis uh you know, back and forth, which I thought was great. And it's good to hear you both kind of talk. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> All right, Stephen, back to you. Well, my number two has already been mentioned. Uh, it is Jean-Michel Jarre. And, well, Ken may correct me, but I thought I chose an oxygen a while back as my favourite. I chose Equinox in my absence when I sent in the list for the French show. So I've actually gone with 2018's Equinox Infinity. Mm -hmm. um, I quite like Jarre through the eras. I quite like Revolution and Rendezvous. Yes, they're a bit 80s and a bit parpy in terms of King Globes. <laughs> but I think they're still quite tasteful. I think that they're still quite good. Other than the fact there's a dance anthem on this. <laughs> this is a real return to form and it's really, really good. Uh, and I was pleasantly surprised because he's not really done all that much of great note in, in recent times. And I'm always frightened when anyone kind of revisits Equinox Infinity. Doesn't really, other than the fact that there's kind of something similar on the cover, and it was 30 years after Equinox, it doesn't really bear any resemblance to it in terms of sound or style. But it's really good, and I really like it. And I actually play this quite a lot. Other than one song on it. So yeah, Equinox Infinity, Jean-Michel Jarre, I think I've probably mentioned both instrumental synthesizer players that I've actually managed to break through in the mainstream in one show. <laughs> That's not bad going. One kind of by default, because he's a V, not a J, but there you go. So yeah, yeah. jar for me. You know, you know what hey, I think? Do you have Zoo Look on yeah. do you have Zoo Look on C D or LP? I've got it on vinyl, yeah. Yeah, you know who plays guitar on that record? Who plays guitar on that record? Adrian Ballou. Oh. There you go. I did not know. Well, certainly didn't remember. Well, I was it. I was at a I was at my local, and it was in like the dollar bin. It was in a Michael. 
shape. I looked on the back. I'm like, oh, I might as well pick this up. Adrian Blue's on. I still haven't played it yet. <laughs> it's, it's a good album. It's, it's a good album, yeah. It's a bit different. Actually, I was going to say, I, I was Anthony, I was surprised you didn't pick that particular one because of Baloo. So it's, it's a good album. Yeah, it's a good album. A little different. All right, Chad. All right, mine's been, uh, my number two has been chosen, but I'm going to pick a different album. I'm um, also going to go with uh, Jord Sjö uh, from Norway. Uh, as Eric mentioned, they started as a as a duo uh, in 2014. This is this one's their fourth album from 2017. Um, the duo of Haken Oftberg and Christian Froland. It's just fun to say those names. Uh, but yeah, you know, like you guys said, it's good sort of pastoral, um, symphonic, Scandinavian goodness. Um, highly recommended for fans of Nyinga Guard and, uh, you know, all those type of uh, retro sort of Swedish bands that we all all love. So, Jord Tio, Jord is the name of this one. I got to check those guys out. George, and you sell them, don't you? I, oh, I have all of them. Yeah, they're, they're, they're all very, very good. Very good. Okay. Yeah, I got to check into those. My number one is uh, Jens Johansson. Got six albums, uh, three as leader and three as co-leader, like the one uh, Eric and Chad held up. He's co-lead, credited as co-leader on that, but that's his album. He wrote all the stuff. This is like the companion piece to it. It came out two years later. Mike Stern and Sean Lane on guitar. Sean mm -hmm. Lane plays two of the most ridiculous solos probably ever recorded. So if you're a big fan of his, you have to get it. Um, Jens is one of the best keyboard players on the planet, one of the most influential guys. He, like so many prog metal guys trying to be like Jens Johansson. The time in Ingve was very influential on guys seeing a keyboard player that could ha hang next to Ingve and, and battle it out. But uh, he's a lot more depth than Ingve, in my opinion. Ingve could never play on this album, for instance. So, uh, Jens Johansson in a, a fairly very thin letter, he's my number one guy. Nice. Yeah, and I think uh, no disrespect to Stradivarius, who I like, but I always kind of thought that he's been kind of wasted in that band. I said that once on that board that Ken and I used to hang out with, and he's like, why can't I do both? I'm like, hmm, I guess you're right. But now he's not doing these kind of records, so. Yeah. He was, he was good with Mastermind. He was yeah. good with Mastermind, yeah. I agree. He's good on everything he guests on. He's like a stunt keyboard player. Yeah. He's play, He played with Rainbow, right? Didn't he do that last yeah. Rainbow? Yeah. yeah. That's where most people remember him from. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's where I remember him from. Well, I, the I funny thing is, him. for me, his work in the early uh, Rising Force albums with Ingbe are very reminiscent to what Blackmore and Tony Carey were doing on like Rainbow Rising. Mm -hmm. So it's yep. kind of like a more updated 80s version of that. That's what I, the way I always took it. So yeah, it's great, great player really good player all right my number one should be no surprise to anybody uh chad and ken's favorite band in the entire universe uh jethro tull and i you know my for whatever reason like over the last like year or two uh my favorite jethro tull album seems to be constantly changing like every couple of months so for years i've always been saying that benefit was my favorite tull album and i still love it but I don't know, man. Minstrel in the Gallery has kind of been it for me for the last year or so. I, I, I love the heaviness of this album. It's proggy. It's got some folk on it. It's, uh, it, to me, this album kind of encompasses everything they were doing like in the early mid 70s. But uh, I, 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 I could say every other week I have a favorite favorite Jethro Tull album. Some days it's Thick as a Brick, sometimes it's Aqualung, sometimes it's uh, Songs from the Wood, Heavy Horses, Stormwatch, I don't know, they're all really great, but, um, but yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Minstrel and the Gallery. It's got a couple epic, epic tracks on it. It's got loads of Martin Bar guitar on it. Um, it's pretty complex and, and cool, and uh, yeah, I love the production as well. So Jethro Tull is my number one. And sadly, Pete, Baker Street Muse was never played live. I know, Incredible. right? How crazy is that? Incredible. <clears throat> yeah. Still boggles my mind. Mm -hmm. One of their best epics, right? Yeah. Yep. Oh, my God. Yeah. Bo boggles me, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> did, we, 
football goes to Chunt. You lose totally a sleepover it every year that doesn't get played, right? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Really. Is that a song? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there's this misconception that I don't like Jethro Tull. I do like Jethro Tull. I just don't go deep on Jethro Tull like, you know, a lot of the other 70s bands. It's me. Okay. Fair enough. It's fun. You know, I, we all can't be perfect, Ken. I, I own a lot of Jethro Tull albums. But, uh, hey, you played us You played us that Stephen Wilson uh, remix of Aqualung. Right? That's right. Sure. I mean, you know, the thing with Aqualung, it's, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know. Everybody knows it. It's it's like Dark Side of the Moon, right? You know, it's uh, like picking Aqualung is, yeah, I don't know. It's a great record. It's, it's, a, great, uh, it's a great record. It's a great album, you know? It's a, given. it's a given. Yeah. I mean, like you said, like Mitch Stroll in the gallery, I think that's a bit more adventurous listen, you know? I just don't know it as well as something like Aqualung. Or, I, don't, I never really particularly liked the, the Mick Abrams period, the really early stuff. Um, yeah, not too many people were too crazy. like blues but, albums, they're okay, but you know, man, you might be hooked if you put minstrel in the system in your place. You might be hooked. That mid, you know, there was that, that mid period for me where I thought Tull was pretty great. You know, too old to rock and roll started losing me there. You know, that was not so great. Anyway, that too old is a very ordinary album, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah but then Songs from the Wood falls, and that's Songs not from the Wood ordinary at all. <laughs> Songs of the Wood, good album, fine album. He 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 swerved, right? He went. Everybody thought he was going to go straight, and he made he made a left turn. Yep. And, you know. So, well, all right. So my my album was one I was concerned that everybody was going to pick, but we'll see. Uh, it's a British band uh, that recorded one album that only came out in Germany. And then uh, they actually reformed years later and put out a number of albums, all of which kind of suck. But this one, I think, is a pretty brilliant album. The band's called Janice, and the name of the album is Gravedigger. Mm -hmm. Is there a wraparound? Uh, start, starts out, it's, it's, it's a very dynamic recording, a lot of contrasting between heavy and uh, quiet parts. It's maybe... Some people might think of it more as like a psych album, but it makes a lot of prog moves. It, it starts out, the opening track is called Red Sun, starts out real kind of quiet, kind of folky. And then it just like, just totally rips. And it's a real heavy guitar. And then you got the other side, which is uh, the sidelong track, the title track, which has a lot of Moody Blues type harmonies, vocal harmonies, uh, a lot of Mellotron on it. Uh, the singer and parts kind of, strangely kind of reminds me of Roger Daltrey. Uh, but, you know, these guys could have been something, but they weren't. And they made one, I think, one great record. Janice Grape there. That's my number one. Good pick. I forgot all about them. Eric. All right. Well, I've got no surprises. I'm going with Jethro Tull. Heavy Horses and Songs from the Wood are my favorites by far in their catalog. Not that I don't love a lot of their stuff um and thankfully we didn't exclude jethro tall from this one because j was a tough letter Very but they have to be my number one i love them so jethro tall nice chuck obviously <laughs> jethro tall again <laughs> and my pick is uh a <clears throat> oh great pick uh, um what's it's an album that many people don't pick and so but um outside of um benefit and so this might be my second favorite album you know by the band you know and they've made some amazing albums but this is the album i usually tend to listen to quite a bit a passion play jethro tell is my number one underrated album good stuff anthony gee i wonder what we're gonna you hear. know what's really too bad Luis is in here because my number one could it be this Ooh. or could it be this. <laughs> I'm going with Eddie Jobs and number one. Everybody knows my love for the man. He's my all-time favorite keyboard player, my all-time favorite violinist. This is his all this is his debut, the green album from 1982. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You like Jobson better than Jean-Luc as a violinist? No, I guess not. All right, he's my go. favorite keyboard player. He's my favorite keyboard player. Sorry, Jobson, but Jean-Luc rules. 1982, Eddie Jobson's debut. 
All right. Good to know that some things are just always going to be there, like comfort. <laughs> how, how many copies of that? Do you have that on cassette and eight track too, Anthony? I've been looking for it on cassette. I have it on CD. Okay. Cool. All right, Stephen, you're number one. No good going so far down the list, is it really? So at least I've chosen a different album to show. So yeah, Jeff will tell realistically, give or take. There's a six or seven album run that I could just have closed my eyes and gone, this one. And I could have told you it was just about my favourite. But I've gone for benefit. I mean, this is the expanded deluxe set, which is really great. Love it. And I've listened to this so much since it came out because all the live stuff and everything that's on here is just outstandingly good. I've raved about it before, and it's just made me go back to the main album over and over and over in recent times. So, yeah, no surprises. Jeff will tell yet again. That I've gone for benefit from 1970. Love it. Great, great stuff. Yeah, the live stuff on that are just is just killer. Yeah, isn't it? It's just so on the money. It's fantastic. They have set the bar for box sets, man. Yeah. No way. About to That's the right way to do it. Yeah. It yep. All right, Chad, what do you got? Well, I'm gonna shut down the love fest for a minute. And it's not gonna be Jethro at all. There's a shock. Um, I should go with a newer band, uh, one that Ken turned a bunch of us on to a couple months ago, Italian space rock band called Jalean. Yeah, this is their second album called Floating Islands. They have one other one called Sonic Drive, which I've not heard. I don't know if you have that, Ken. I don't uh, what's that? I don't have it. I haven't heard it. Yeah, I might have to hunt that down. This is real uh, aggressive space rock, real good biting guitar, uh, really cool keyboard sounds. Um, you get some of that object tentacle bubbling going on. Um, so I guess he, this guy, this a quartet from, from Milan, Italy. Uh, I don't know a heck of a lot about him otherwise, but fans of object tentacles, quantum fante, uh, Hydria space folk, definitely up your alley. Fantastic space rock album, floating islands by Jalean. Yeah. Great choice. That's a really, really good album. Good choice. George, you got any honorables? Yep. First one is Jelonek, Polish band, violin led, progressive oh. metal, all instrumental. But mm. Really good production, uh, crunchy riffs, and the violin player, his sound is great. Benny Jansen, Swedish guitar player, plays with the Johansons a lot, Jens Johansson, <coughs> Wales on this one, big time. Kind of like a more metallic Holdsworth. And Scott Jones, another guitar player, St. Louis area, two albums, works really slow. This is 2004, and then there's one in two years ago, and that's pretty much it. I know he had some hand problems. Uh, just seems to be a guy that never puts it up, gets it all together and gets it going, but both albums, excellent. Scott Jones. Ooh, that's it. All right, I just got a couple here. Uh, this band uh, was around in the 70s from Connecticut. One of their members uh, went on to join the band Archangel. The other one was a vocalist from House of Lords, Jasper Rath. Yeah. Pretty cool symphonic art rock band. Pretty good album. This is a cool little anthology, which uh, collects, I believe, everything they did on two CDs. Really, really good stuff there. Uh, I'm also going to go with uh, Jonesy. All right. Really like this, almost made my top three. That's quite a good choice uh, by Ken. And then my last one, uh, this is a band from South Africa. They're a pretty heavy uh, and rock and prog band. So I guess, I don't know what, and this is an old album from, I think, 72. So I guess you can kind of call this maybe proto-prog, proto-metal, but there's definitely a lot of prog on here. There's definitely a lot of um, South African influences, and they're from South Africa. The band is Jericho, self-titled. Jericho is they were Israeli. Were they Israeli? Yeah, they were the Churchills. Oh, you're right. So why do I keep it says South Africa everyone? I'm, I'm sorry to correct you. Um they yeah, they were they were Israeli and uh uh they made two albums. Jer well, they started out as the Churchills, one of the rarest psych albums you'll ever find, right? And then they did Jericho and then they were Jericho Jones. Jericho Jones. They they had two albums, one is Jericho and one is Jericho Jones. It's fine stuff though, and it's it's heavy in spots. 
and there's Please. lots of uh, interesting percussion and things and it's uh there's definitely some psych going on this album as well uh, but when it does get heavy it's pretty heavy so yeah it's a very very cool album when you were talking about south africa <laughs> i thought you were going to talk about joe berg hawk oh, uh, johannesburg hawk which which was a big prog rock ensemble from south africa that put out an album on uh, that came out on charisma yeah, it's weird because I've had this forever, but I couldn't remember where they were from. And I was kind of thinking that they were from Israel, but I, I looked up just to make sure. And I went to three different sources that said it was all from, say, they were from South Africa. I'm like, oh, a bunch, right. of, bunch of heaps like me. Yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> kind of what I thought, but uh, I was like, all right, glad you brought that up. Cool. So that's my honorable mentions. Back to Kim. Okay. Uh, I got a bunch, so, but I don't want to keep Stephen up too late. So, uh, in, uh, not too many people probably know this, but I had another label that was a collaboration with uh, a shop in Italy, actually with another label in Italy uh, called Minotaur Records. And we started a label called The Labyrinth. And we had done an album by an Italian man called Il Trono de Ricordi. Uh, we did another Italian man called Sailor Free, but we did some reissues as well. And this is one that I brought to the table. This was a Canadian band that put out a very good album in 1973. They were called Jackal. And uh, the name of the album is Awake. And they're often compared to Deep Purple, which I don't think is particularly accurate. Very heavy Hammond organ guitar workouts. Uh, really talented musicians. One and done. That's my first honorable mention. I'm running through these alphabetically. Pete had mentioned Jade Warrior. And also he mentioned Jane between heaven and hell. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is my, this is my favorite. The thing with Jane is the vocals always kind of sucked. I can never get past the vocals, but the music's really good. Nah, it's just, he's just not a good singer. His accent's real heavy. And, but you know, this one, Fire, War, Earth, and Air between heaven and hell. Oh, good. This one's a real depressing album. I like it. Um, then I had uh, a Czech band, Jazz Q. The Jazz Q, very, very good jazz rock, prog rock band led by the keyboard player, Martin uh, uh, Cratchville. Somebody's going to correct me. I'm sure that I just decimated his, the guy's name. Uh, I th I'm surprised George didn't mention this one. Solo album by George Jinda, the percussionist from Speed Limit. And also, well, later on, he, he had this kind of smooth jazz thing called Special FX. But uh, this, is a, this is a great jazz rock album has Yashko Sefer playing on it from uh, from Magma. And uh, guys, uh, who else is on here? Uh, Jean-Louis uh, Bucci, uh, Didier Bittard from Heldens playing on here. Very, very good jazz rock album. Uh, what else? Another band, British band, that made a couple of excellent albums, each one a little different. Jody Grind. They, uh, they made one called One Step Beyond, and uh, One Step On, I believe, and then Far Canal. And this one, uh, it's led by the keyboard player, Tim Hinckley. Uh, very, very heavy on the Hammond organ. But on this one, he's got uh, this guitar player, Bernie Holland, who's phenomenal. And uh, this album just totally rips. Great British prog band. I believe Esoteric reissued both albums. You should definitely pick them up. This is the one I'm, I'm really bummed that Luis is not here because I thought he would bust the vein when, he, when I held this one up. It's an exploitation album that came out on the Alshire label, which used to put out like cocktail jazz and, and various exploitation albums. It's by John Bunyan's Progressive Pilgrims, <laughs> Apricot Brandy and Albatross. And it's, it's just this crazy fucked up album just wicked guitar and 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 Hammond organ uh, they, they, they do they do a, they do a, a cover of summertime blues on here which is probably not not to be believed great great crazy psychedelic album by John Bunyan's Progressive Pilgrims uh George Joe which I think we're all pronouncing it wrong this is Nephilion again I'm sure that's not the way it's pronounced but uh, very, very good album. Then also uh, a band that I mentioned in the past, uh, I, don't, I don't have a prop, phenomenal uh, European band, Joseph Magazine, Night of the Red Sky, one of the best prog metal albums I've ever heard, musically and sonically, and they're working on a new album after all these years. And the last thing I have is uh, from Norway, Juniper Green. 
and I wish I could afford an, a copy of the album. It was a double album that came out in 1971. And to me, it has has a strong uh, Canterbury feel. Um, reminds me of uh, Caravan quite a bit. They were they uh, made a number of albums, but uh, Friendship was was there uh, was the one. So Juniper Green, and that's what I got. Cool, good stuff there, Eric. Uh, I've got two that actually haven't been mentioned. Usually, my honorables get hit. Um, this one might be a cheat. But considering the players that are on it, I'm going with Jazz is Dead. And uh, I think this was T. Lavitz's band, but they had a ton of guys that went through this. I love Jimmy Herring. He's on these albums. I think Alfonso Johnson, Rod Morgenstein, Jeff Sipe. So a number of guys who um, are in the scene, and they basically do instrumental versions of dead tunes. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a deadhead, but I love Jimmy Herring's playing. And a band that I don't normally go to Neo Prague, um, but Jadis, their first couple. Um, this one, I think, is Once Upon a Lifetime, which was an EP, uh, More Than Meets the Eye and Across the Water were the three that I have. I always like Gary Chandler's guitar playing, mm -hmm. um, kind of a Gilmore-ish uh, player. So those are my two honorables. Didn't uh, Cobham play on that first Jazz from Hell? Yeah. I, you know, I know he was in the band. It was very brief. I couldn't remember if he played on that. I should, I got to pull it. Um, he played on, I think, their, their first album. Was yeah, it? He was on the first one. The mm -hmm. full album, or was he just on a couple tracks? I don't remember. I think yeah, it was, I think it was but, on Yeah, the he, Cobham was definitely a member for a bit. And I said jazz from hell. I meant jazz is dead. <laughs> Zappa. I listened to a lot of Zappa in the car over the weekend. <laughs> All right, Chuck. I um, just have one. You know, what's it that? Um, it's a band that uh, featured uh, David Sylvian. You know, uh, what's it that? Mick Karn and um, Richard Barbieri. Um, what's it that? Um, I'm going to pick um, what's a Japan's last album. You know, what's it that? The other albums, um, what's it, the prior four albums had a lot of glam rock um, influences and so, but it's on this album that you got to hear their, um, the, 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 what's it, the direction that that um, David C. Vim will actually go into with um, Seekers of the Beehive um, and all these other albums, which were a bit more ambient. And everybody knows of Rich Barbieri, who's now with Porcupine Tree, you know, who's done other stuff. And then you also have Mick Karn, who brought um, his Middle Eastern um, roots into a lot of these albums over here. And this is perhaps their most progressive album, progressive sounding album, and probably the closest that it was to David Sylvian's um, solo career. And that was that's my only honorable mention. That's um, Japan's Tindrum from 1982. Nick Karn, greatly missed. <clears throat> Very much so. Mm -hmm. Anthony. Uh, I got three, uh, John and Vangelis. Uh, Friends of Mr. Cairo from 1981. This is probably my favorite of theirs. Uh, another one that Chuck said, I'm going to go with their debut, Journey's debut. I think it's phenomenal sounding with Neil Sean and Greg Raleigh just, and Ansley Dunsmore on drums. Just a phenomenal record. And then last but not least, uh, former bass player of Weather Report, uh, played in Billy Cobham's band, played with Phil Collins later on. Uh, Alfonso Johnson, he's got uh, three. This is his debut. Uh, Moon Shadows, really fusing me, great stuff. I love, I, he I didn't sing, but I, with, with Cobbins' band, he did sing a little bit, loved his voice. So great musician, Alfonso Johnson. Great, great, great choice. Those are good. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> Steven. I, I'm done, really. Everyone's chosen. I only had one honorable mention, kicking myself from not having yours so in mind. Uh, so I'm glad they got some love elsewhere. Jadis was the only band that I picked out as an honorable mention. Uh, I went for More Than Meets the Eye from 1992, which was kind of their full length debut. Um, kind of a bit late to the neo prog scene, UK band featured John Jowett and Martin Orford from IQ. Mm -hmm. At certain points, they've kind of come and gone from the ranks over the years. Uh, their output's kind of slowed to a crawl. The last couple albums maybe weren't quite so strong, but the early stuff, as Eric mentioned, is really, really good. Mm -hmm. They were. They didn't sound like IQ. They were totally different. Yeah, they're yeah. much more accessible. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. They, it was much more song based. You could hear the the camel influence on them, and so. But 
it's probably like a more of a mix between Camel and I would say like a late period uh, Pink Floyd. That's uh, yeah, I would look at that's, them. that's a really good description of them actually. Yeah, yeah, I thought they were like a less keyboardy kind of pen dragon too at times. You know, mm -hmm. a little bit more accessible than pen dragon. Yeah, it feels like to me there's a qualitative difference between a band like that and, and IQ. Yeah, I, I've always kind of viewed Jadis as kind of top of Division 2, if that makes sense, that they've kind of they never quite broke through into what you thought they might have been. Second, second tier neo -proc. That's what I mean by Division 2, sorry, very yeah. much UK is on there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I would say se second tier, but the, the early stuff is well worth listening to. Yeah, it's enjoyable, yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. I think so. Chad. Okay, I got a couple. Uh, some of them have been mentioned, some haven't. Just to make you guys happy, honorable mention for Jethro Tull. But I'm taking thick as a brick. I've always really liked this one. Uh, when I did the, when we did the Jethro Tull versus Rush, Signal versus Broadsword, I did a lot of, uh, I'll call it research, went back and listened to some of those mid period albums. And I did like songs from the, so, so, yeah, songs from the wood and some of those albums in there. Those are, those are quite good, but. That still stands number one for me. Um, Jade Warrior was mentioned. Um, now, Anthony, I, I, I will put Eddie Jobson on my list. There's no question, but I am not holding up Zinc because I don't like Zinc. I don't like that album at all. I don't like the way it sounds. I don't like the way Eddie sings, but I think he's a phenomenal player. He played near fast twice and blew the house apart. He's an awesome player. He absolutely deserves to be in the J list. I just, I can't hold up Zinc. Can't do it. Just can't do it. <laughs> hold it up for him, Ed. <laughs> I, I agree. And for the 75th time. I agree with Chad. I, I don't like that album at all. Yeah, I'm sorry. Who asked you? <laughs> <laughs> I love Eddie Jobson. <laughs> IQ, or, uh, UK is the, is the pinnacle for me for him, but I just, I, I can't hold up that album. I don't, I like have, the you ever, have you ever checked out Theme of Secrets? Theme of Secrets is a better record. Yep, it is. Much agreed. Um, Italian band, Jet Lag, kind of in the uh, Deus Ex Machina meets DFA realm. Real nice album. This one is called uh, Delusion, Delusion Optica. We destroyed that. Um, US super group, the Jelly Jam. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Rod Mor Morgenstein. Let me just drop it. Um, uh, Ty Tabor from King's X and and John Myung from Dream Theater. Mm -hmm. It's not all that different than a King's X record for the most part, but it's pretty solid. There's some great guitar work on this, and uh, Ty's voice is always great. Um, first Journey album is on my list. I like, uh, there's certain songs like uh, Kahootak of a Lifetime, uh, just, you know, just, just great early stuff. Uh, I'm still in the progressive realm. Like you guys said, the first three, four albums are great. Uh, and then my last one is uh, Jadis. The only one actually I have from them is Understand. Um, or is it Understood? Understand, because I'll correct the first time. Understand. Um, and I, I agree with Steven. They're good neo band, maybe top of that second division, that, that second tier. So those are my honorable mentions. Cool. Sounds good. So, of course... Everybody watching, what are your favorite prog and fusion and prog metal bands that start with Jay? Put them in the comments below, as always. And uh, this is on the web at www.seeyourtranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. All together. All the day. All on the day. 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 Stay tuned for another episode of In the Prog Seat next Tuesday night. Till then, for Chad Hutchinson, Stephen Reed, Eric Porter, Chuck Alvarez, Anthony Ferrar, George Lemay, and Ken Golden, I am Pete Pardo. Have a good rest of the week, everybody. Take care. Night.